Hello, I'm Landon Schlingen, and today we are going to go through the American British Translator on FreeCodeCamp. And let's take a look at this. It has to be functionally similar to this project right here, where if we say color, then it will translate it into color, because that's a spelling they have in British or in British English. If I did favorite, then it would be favorite, like that. And there's some other things like Mr. with a dot turns into Mr. without a dot, or time, like if I did 11 o'clock, then it's like 11.00. So those are some of the changes that are different between American and British English. And we have to have some algorithms to help us translate it. So let's uh, go back here. I'm going to complete it locally with Visual Studio Code. And to do that, we have to go to this GitHub repo and get it get the boilerplate starter project here. So we go to code, copy this HTTPS part, go into our Visual Studio code, uh, go into a folder that you want to put it in, and then just do git clone and paste in that link, and then it will copy into there. And here we go, our boilerplate project. I'm going to rename it quick here to Brit Eng Translator. Here we go. I'm going to open it up, check the package JSON, and they have NodeMon installed already and we don't need a database for this project so i'm just going to cd into it and then just do npm install once it's installed then we can just do uh, npm run start and that will start it up on port 3000 and we can open it up there localhost 3000 and here's our project if i do anything here it won't do anything and we have to implement this first thing i want to do is look inside of our routes file well actually i'm going to just open up this project all right, so now I just have my British English translator open. If I go into routes, api.js, we just have this one route to worry about. The first thing I want to do here is have some checks in place to make sure they put stuff in. So if I go into their project, if I don't have anything here, then it says error no text translate. So I want to be able to say that. So this is how I do that. Um, also, I need to select a locale, or if the text is undefined, then required fields are missing. If text is empty, then error no text translate. Those are a couple checks we need to do, and then we can get on to translating our text. Uh, we are also given, inside of our components, we have all these different words that get translated. American to British and American to British for these. British only and then we have our translator that we actually have to put our functions in. But yeah, I'm going to start with this api.js file. Um, what we want to do is this stuff here. We have our translation which is an empty string to start off with and basically if it's American to British locale then we want to do to British English but we haven't implemented this function yet but we will. Otherwise if it's British to American then do it the other way. Otherwise, error invalid value for locale field, which means it's not American British or British to American, something else. And then if our translation equals our text or we don't have a translation, then we just say everything looks good to me. So here, let me, if I test in theirs right here, if I say hello, then it just says everything looks good to me because hello doesn't get translated into anything. So that's why we have that there. Everything looks good to me there. Otherwise, we grab our translation and we grab the first translation or the second translation inside of our array that's going to be returned because our first one is going to be without highlights and the second one is going to be with the highlights. So now let's go into our translator. First thing I want to do is I want to define our two British English and our two American English functions. Our two British English takes in a dict of the American only um, translations and also the American to British spelling. So that would be these two right here. And then our titles is the American to British titles. And then our time rejects has this double colon in it. Um, this stuff down here, um, it's British only for the American English one. And then we ac actually have to reverse this dictionary, American to British spelling. So what we're doing there is we're going to change the order of these so this accessorized is going to switch with this accessorized and vice versa and the way we do that is with another function that i have it's called re reverse dict where we do object dot assign to a new object and then we take our object dot entries and we map each key value into the value and the key so not too bad there but still a little confusing but yeah we reverse the dictionary on the american to british spelling and also the american to british titles our time rejects is a little bit different we just have a dot here instead of a colon and then we have this other function called translate which is used by both of these functions and we just pass in the information we need to it the text the dictionary that we use the titles we use the time rejects we use 
And then we also give like a locale of two British or two American. So now we need that translate function. And this translate function is kind of complicated. It's also really long, but hopefully we learn a lot going through it. First of all, we take our text and we put it to lowercase. It'd be really hard if we had to keep cases on theirs on this. Like the American to British English translator doesn't even do it. So like if I did uppercase favorite, then I translate it, it goes to lowercase favorite. But if I had to keep uppercase, then this project would be a lot lot harder so that's why we do that bring it to lowercase and then we have this matches map object and then we search for our titles and if we find a title then we add it to our matches map and i did this in order to keep the uppercase part of it and then we filter words with spaces so we get all of the words with spaces so some of these have spaces in them so yeah like bedroom community has a space and it turns into dormitory town that has a space in it takes all the words with spaces and puts it into a new object Object. And then we map through that object and if it includes it, then we add it to our matches map. Next up, we search for individual word matches. So these are ones with dashes or with just a single word. So that would be like boardwalk into promenade or counterclockwise into anti-clockwise. And we do it with this regular expression here and we add it to our matches map. And then we search for our times. And basically with the times, all we have to do is replace the colon with the dot if it finds it. Only for the matched times though. If there's no matches in our matches map, we just return null. And that's why up here, if this is null, then we just return the text and there's no change. And then inside of our api.js file, if the translation equals the text, then we just say everything looks good to me. Next thing we have to do is we actually have to replace all of the words that that matched. And we do this with a replace all function and we do it with a replace all with highlight function. So the replace all function will do it without the highlights. And let me grab that quick here. I'll grab both of them. These are separate functions underneath. We have this replace all that takes in our text and our matches map. And we make a new regular expression that takes our matches map, the keys of our matches map, and it joins them with a or. So like this is the or symbol for, for regular expressions. So if it equals this word or this word or this word or this word, then we want to replace it with that matches map and make it lowercase as well. And we kind of do the same thing with the with all highlights, except we just wrap it with a span of class highlight. Also make sure that this highlight is double quotes. If it's single quotes, then it won't pass many of the tests. So yeah, that's what we do with that. And then we return our translation and our translation with highlight as an array. And then up here, we just return that double array to our American English and British English. And that's why in our API file, we do translation index of one to get the second one with the highlights. That's why it's green when I do it. So if I, I think it's pretty much all we need. Oh, one more thing with the, with the titles here, there is a problem with it for Mr. and Mrs. So if I go to titles, you see that Mr. is before Mrs. And that's actually a problem because if we did Mrs. inside of it, it would actually match with Mr. Even though we wanted Mrs. So we just need to change the order of that and have Mrs. go first. So then it'll check Mrs. first and then Mr. Just some weird thing we need in there for it to pass all the tests. And then I think, so like if I do one of these here, let's see if it works. Blue is my favorite color. And I translate that. You can see that favorite color is highlighted green. And that's specifically because we wrap it with a span of class highlight. And then we have our translation that translation with the span inside of it. So let's try this out. If I grab my local host and I throw it inside the recode camp tests, it won't pass all of them, but it'll pass a lot of them. Yeah, so it passes pretty much all of them except for the 24 unit tests and the six functional tests, which again are kind of boring to do. And they're right here basically. We have to translate all of these for the unit tests. And we also have to do some post requests to API slash translate. So I guess I'll do that quick. Instead of our tests, inside of our unit tests, I'm just gonna copy everything. So our unit tests, mangoes are my favorite fruit, should equal mangoes are my favorite fruit with a different spelling. And you see I grabbed the first part of the translator to British English, which is the one without highlights. Otherwise I would need like a bunch of span of highlights in this text for it to match. But since I just do without the highlight, then it's just, you know, without the spans. And we can just do it like this. I ate yogurt for breakfast. I ate yogurt for breakfast. We had a party at my friend's condo. 
We had a party at my friend's flat and you toss this in the trash can, toss it in the bin. The parking lot was full. The car park was full. Like a high-tech Rube Goldberg machine, like a high-tech Heath Robson device. Uh, to play hooky means to skip class or work. To bunk off means skip class or work. No Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. No Mr. Bond with without a dot. Translate Dr. Grush, Dr. Drush without a dot. Lunch is at 12.15 with double colon compared to a period. Footy match, soccer match, um, par paracetamol or Tylenol. Um, we have caramelize the onions, caramelize the onions with a Z. Uh, spent the bank holiday at the fun fair. Spent the public holiday at the carnival. Had a bicky, then went to the chippy. I had a cookie, then went to the fish and chip shop. So yeah, that's how we would say it in America. <laughs> like, what does this even mean? Bicky, then went to the chippy. So weird. I've got bits and bobs in my bum bag. I've got odds and ends in my fanny pack. The car boot sale at Boxed Airfield was called off. The swap meet was called off. Have you met Miss Kalini? So here we have Mrs. with a dot. And this one would fail if we didn't have that our Mr. and Mrs. switched up. Kind of need to do that. And then we have Professor without a dot and with a dot. We have our time of 4.30 and 4.30. And then we have our highlight translations. So now we actually add in the span of class highlight between these ones of yogurt and favorite and soccer and Tylenol. And then we move on to our functional tests. Uh, another thing to run these tests, we need to actually grab a .env file and copy over the sample env. And we just need to uncomment this and then it will run our tests. Also, we can get rid of the sample env. So if I save that, I need to actually re oh, actually uh, runs our tests right away. And all of our unit tests are passing. Next up, we have to do our six functional tests. So this uses chai and chai HTTP. We do a post request to API slash translate and we send a text and our locale. And we just make sure that what's given back is a span of class highlight with favorite around it. We translate with text and invalid local field. So our local is invalid. And then we make sure our error that's returned is invalid value for locale field. Translate with mix, missing text field. Here I don't have text in there, so it just says required fields missing. Translation with missing locale field. Here there's no locale field, so it's required fields missing. Translate with empty text. Here we have an empty text field, so there should be no text to translate. And then we translate with text that needs no translation. Um, so this one should be the find the way it is. Uh, there's no translation in it and it should just return everything look, looks good to me. So those are our functional tests. If I save it, it'll run those and they should pass. So yep, all those passed and we have 30 passing now. And now we should be able to complete the project on Free Code Camp. So if we go to our project, solution link, complete it, and we get it done. So that's cool. Next up, we're going to do introduction to Python for everybody. I have a little bit of experience with Python, so it should be fun to do. It's a fun language to learn. And yeah, I actually have to say a big thanks to this Kevin Sanchez 15 guy, because this is kind of where I got the ideas of how to do this. So if I go into his public folder and I go into his translator, this is where he made his American British Dictionary and his British American Dictionary by like reversing it with this reverse dict function and then translating it with just one function instead of two, except I used two just because I thought it would be easier to see. What he did was he did translation type and then he used either American or the British dict. Uh, I had to change up the title things for it to pass the test. So that's one part that I did. You see with mine, I do v.char at zero dot two uppercase to make sure the first letter is uppercase and then I slice it uh, and add on the rest. What he does is he just does V. That's one change I made to it. I use the same regular expressions as he did and it was very useful <laughs> for me to see all this right here as well. Uh, one thing he doesn't have though is he has highlight as a single quote when it should be a double quote. And yeah, his, uh, his project helped me a lot. So thank you to Kevin Sanchez or Kelvin, Kelvin Sanchez. So that's all I have for us today. Uh, give the video a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.